Channel 5, KXAS TV. This is Channel 5 News at 10. The most complete look at the news tonight with the team to watch for news. Brad Wright, Alice Carone, Scott Murray with tonight's sports, and meteorologist Harold Taft with tomorrow's weather forecast. And now, Channel 5 News tonight. Good evening. The man accused of killing 13-year-old Michelle Tremier is dead. The Denton County Sheriff Department says that Robert Mathis tonight hanged himself. Word we get from Denton County is that Mathis apparently took his sock off, draped it over a pipe in his cell, and hung himself. He was declared dead by the Denton County Medical Examiner at 6.15 this evening. You may recall just yesterday, Mathis had attempted to escape from the Denton County Courthouse while he was being booked for the murder of Michelle Tremier. He was shot and slightly wounded as he ran down the street. He was released from the hospital and returned to jail today. Mathis was charged with capital murder after the 13-year-old girl's body was found on a Denton County farm he worked. The child had been the object of an intense search for almost a month. Mathis had been living next to her North Richland Hills home with his fiance when young Michelle disappeared. Again, Robert Mathis tonight hanged himself in the Denton County Jail. Alice? Tonight, parents with children at Lapati Daycare in Arlington were updated on the investigation of child abuse at the center. About three dozen parents met with the president of the Lapati Academy. Linda Frederick reports tonight on what kind of message the parents heard. And when there's 130 children and 20 staff members, I don't think there's any question that, that anything that goes on is definitely under a microscope, whether it's inside the building or on the playground that you can see through all the windows. Jack Roseman is convinced his La Petite employees are not responsible for abusing children at this daycare center. Tonight, parents came to the facility to hear Brosman tell them the same thing. I found no evidence to prove they are guilty of any wrongdoing and believe they're innocent. But despite Brosman's reassurances, more than half of the parents with children enrolled here have not brought their children back since the allegations of abuse surfaced. Tomorrow night, a parents' meeting has been scheduled. La Petite officials are not invited, neither is the media. The parent meeting organizer says she wants the parents to be able to talk openly and honestly among themselves about their children and about what their children have said has happened to them at the state care center. Linda Frederick, Channel 5 News Tonight in Arlington. A man who claimed to have a bomb and to be holding a hostage tonight is in police custody. That after a four and a half hour standoff at St. Joseph Hospital in Fort Worth. The man was arrested shortly before 6 o'clock this evening after members of the tactical squad stormed the prayer room of the hospital where the man was barricaded. The decision to storm the room was made after police drilled a hole in the chapel room wall and observed the 25-year-old man for several hours. When they determined there was no hostage and no weapon, they broke through a rear wall and the front door at the same time. The man is expected to be arraigned tomorrow on charges of criminal mischief and making terrorist threats. Police say the oil rig worker from Salem, Oregon, was taken to John Peter Smith Hospital for psychiatric examination. Eight women and four men will determine if a 39-year-old Moroccan is guilty of the worst mass murder in Dallas County history. The panel was finally chosen late this afternoon. The defendant is Abdul Karim Belakab. He's accused of fatally shooting six people at a North Dallas night spot last June. Belakab claims he was insane at the time. Negotiations between General Dynamics and the International Association of Machinists broke off at noon today. And tonight, preparations for a strike are underway. If a contract is not ratified by Sunday night and a strike vote is approved, pickets will be up at the Fort Worth plant on Monday morning. Union representatives say the contract they've been offered is below standard in wage and health benefits, and the 6,400 IAM members are ready to strike for a better deal. It will last until such time as the company comes to the table and makes an equitable offer for its employees, our membership. People, it's helped make. A spokesman for General Dynamics says the company is still willing to negotiate. There has not been a strike of significance at General Dynamics since 1946. A federal bankruptcy judge in Fort Worth tonight postponed a decision on a suit against Braniff Airlines by the owner of its jet fleet. The Wilmington Trust of Delaware is trying to block Braniff from subleasing some of its idled planes to other airlines. Wilmington claims it should be allowed to do the subleasing. Braniff actually started grounding planes today by canceling flights that did not have full enough loads. Angry, stranded passengers were booked on other airlines or other Braniff planes. Meanwhile, the job-sharing plan approved by Braniff's flight attendants Tuesday was called off tonight by Vice President Marvin Schlinke. There will now be furloughs beginning next week. And it still is not clear how many other workers will lose their jobs when Braniff ends service on 10 of its 20 routes next Tuesday.
Still to come on Channel 5 News tonight, as street violence worsens in India, the U.S. denies being behind the assassination of Indira Gandhi. And a profile of the Republican who wants the top law enforcement job in Tarrant County. Stay with us. Enjoy the taste of fresh, creamy, best-made mayonnaise. And add the crowning touch of taste to your favorite foods. Best-made mayonnaise. This is the Age Zone. This is Age Zone Controller. Charles of the Ritz brings you the power to control tiny age lines, reducing them significantly in days. Age Zone Controller. One precious drop every day, every night, and you have the power to control your age zones at your fingertips. Age Zone Controller. It's never too soon to start. A rich gray tote with skincare, cosmetics, and fragrance at Sanger Harris. Nissan 85, long bids, king cabs, 4x4s, sport trucks, all major values starting at a $59.99 sticker, same as last year. All re-engineered with a new smooth side strong box. Nissan 85, built tough enough to be major motion. Come alive, come and drive, major motion from Nissan. It's your Datsun dealer. Just to recap what we told you at the top of the news, a startling development in the case of Michelle Tremier, the 13-year-old murdered in Denton. The man accused of that murder, Robert Mathis, tonight hanged himself in his Denton County Jail. Channel 5, Cindy Kirkendall is with one of our live units in Denton County. Cindy? Brad, a Denton County jailer found Mathis hanging in his cell shortly before 5 this afternoon. Officers say he hung himself with his own sock. Here to talk to us now is Chief Deputy Jim Wilson of the Denton County Sheriff's Department. Jim, I understand that officers had checked on him minutes before he was found hanging and that he appeared to be normal at that time. Yes, that's correct. They had checked on him a short time previously and then approximately 5 p.m. found him hanging in his cell. They cut him down and immediately started a CPR and requested emergency medical treatment. Uh, that arrived, but they were unable to uh, resuscitate him. He gave no indication of being upset this afternoon, no indication that he was going to, to do something like this at all? No, he did not. I saw him during arraignment right after noontime, and although he was quiet, he appeared very normal to me. Okay, you've had a hard time tonight notifying the family, but I understand they're in the, met in the Metroplex and they have been notified? Yes, they have. We had a very difficult time locating the father and stepmother who were in the area, and I was notified just moments ago that they have been notified. Okay, thank you very much for your time and for this information. We appreciate your effort out here. Again, Mark Robert Mathis, dead tonight, found hanging in his cell at 5 p.m. in the Denton County Jail, an apparent suicide. Reporting live in Denton County, this is Cindy Kirkendall, Channel 5 News, tonight. Cindy, thanks very much. Elsewhere in the news tonight, the United States has sent a strong protest to Moscow because of Soviet news stories today. They suggest that the CIA was somehow involved in the assassination of Indira Gandhi. The U.S. says not only is that absurd, but it endangers American lives. With street violence worsening in India over the killing of Mrs. Gandhi, the State Department obviously is concerned for the safety of the American delegation which will attend her funeral Saturday. At least 148 people have already died in the riots in India. A thousand more have been hurt. Security troops have been rushed into the worst areas with orders to shoot rioters on sight. But so far, they haven't even been able to contain the mobs. Mrs. Gandhi's son and successor, Rajiv, has pleaded for calm, but it's feared the violence will spread. Meanwhile, in this country, the FBI claims to have smashed a plot to assassinate the Honduran president, Roberto Suazo. Eight people were arrested in Florida in connection with the alleged plot, and more than $10 million in cocaine was seized. According to the FBI, the cocaine was flown in from Colombia and was to be used to finance the alleged Honduran coup. Condemned murderer Velma Barfield is scheduled to die by lethal injection in North Carolina in a few hours. She will be the first woman executed in this country in 22 years. The 52-year-old grandmother was convicted of poisoning her fiancé. She also has confessed to killing her 74-year-old mother and two elderly nursing home residents. And this bizarre note tonight out of Huntsville, as Thomas Barefoot was about to be executed earlier this week, other death row inmates voted to watch Monday Night Football. They had turned off their televisions before the three previous executions. One inmate said there was less feeling for Barefoot than for the other three. Well, if you plan to vote absentee, tomorrow is the deadline for voting in person. Well, over 100,000 Metroplex voters are expected to cast absentee ballots for next Tuesday's elections. 
Tarrant County already has topped the 40,000 mark and 10,000 ballots may be forthcoming. In Dallas County, the combined total of mail and in-person voting is now approaching 59,000. Last night at 10 o'clock, Channel 5's Ron Trumbler profiled the Democratic candidate for Tarrant County Sheriff and highlighted some of the campaign issues. Tonight, we meet the Republican candidate. You could say that Don Carpenter is a Republican fish trying to swim up a Democratic stream, and if not overly friendly, at least the waters are familiar. Carpenter has been an insider at the Sheriff's Department for 15 years. Whether campaigning on campus, in malls, or on street corners, and he goes everywhere, he points to his hands-on experience as his prime asset. If anyone can work well with local police departments, he says it is him, and not his opponent, A.J. Brown. He couldn't even work for the city of Fort Worth. They uh, got a petition up to get rid of him, and he finally resigned to get out. So if he couldn't work for the city of Fort Worth, I don't know how he could work with these small municipal departments out here in Tarrant County. I can do it. He disagrees with Brown that the department's 9,000 arrest warrants can be served quickly. And unlike Brown, he wants to use jail commissary profits for the benefit of deputies. That commissary is run by the sheriff, so the sheriff ought to be able to do what he wants to with those funds. So I'm going to use it as a fund for the employees. Carpenter does agree on the jail overcrowding and the need for inmate work programs. Working in these bar ditches, uh, picking up stuff in the county here, helping clean up the city, the county and the area, then we can do it that way and help get them out of there. No one knows better than Don Carpenter that Tarrant County has long been a traditional Democratic stronghold. But he knows, too, that the political winds have been shifting somewhat in recent years and that 1984 could be the year that one of them blows him into the office of sheriff. Ron Trumbla, Channel 5 News. Still ahead, bad news for Metroplex race fans. Scott Murray has some startling news about the Dallas Grand Prix. Stay with us. Partnership of August Bartoldi, the sculptor, and Gustav Eiffel, the engineer, would produce an artistic achievement which would become the symbol of liberty. With them, the hopes and dreams of people around the world. The best way to achieve your dream is to have a partner who shares it. Republic Bank. Together, we make it happen. To keep fares low, some airlines cut back on service. Puppy. Not on Delta, where you enjoy great service on a great low fare. How about that movie, huh? Just give it a good spin. <laughs> and movies on selected Delta flights to California and Fort Lauderdale. Hello? So why fly an airline that's low on fares Comfy. and low on service? Fly Delta. Low, low fares and sky-high service. That's the Delta spirit. More than telephone service, the Southwestern Bell Network is the messenger of the information age. We needed a high-speed data link to connect the new computer center to our worldwide communication network, and we needed it in a hurry. Southwestern Bell Telephone's quick response put us online and on time. To put information into motion, call Southwestern Bell Telephone. We're online with the future. Well, Scott Murray is in now to talk about sports, and he has some surprising news about next year's Dallas Grand Prix, and news that's going to be very discouraging for all those folks who enjoyed this year's Grand Prix like so much. Like you and me, uh, who enjoy auto racing so much. It has been canceled for 1985. The Dallas Grand Prix is off until 1986, so they're going to skip a year. Here's the story tonight as it stands, Brad. Initially, FOCA, the governing body of the Formula One Racing Commission, gave Dallas the Grand Prix date of March 24th. Then there was talk about possibly a June 2nd date. It was decided June was too late, and the March date conflicted with the state sesquicentennial celebration. So tonight, the powers to be from all the parties involved decided to cancel the 1985 Dallas Grand Prix at Fair Park. Instead, two Texas Challenge races will be held, like the one last weekend at Green Valley, as part of the Can-Am Series, which will be coordinated by the Dallas Grand Prix Corporation. One of those races scheduled to be part of the sesquicentennial celebration. As for the Dallas Grand Prix Formula One race, that returns in 1986 to Fair Park. But unfortunately, as we tell you, there will be no Formula One Grand Prix race in Dallas come next year. In the National Football League, the Cowboys and Giants set to meet Sunday at Texas Stadium. Giants quarterback Phil Simms claims his club is ready for all comers. 
I think I got an offense now that has been designed and it was made for me. It's you know mostly a drop back. I get to move around a little, and uh, we get the ball down the field, and that's my strengths, and that's that's why I'm having success because it's it's catered to me, and it, it really suits me very well. Lots of talk about the future of veteran Cowboys middle linebacker Bob Brunick. It's been a tough year thus far for number 53, as he's been bothered by chronic back problems. Mike Fernandez has more. When Bob Brunick is played, the critics have been all over him. He's had to contend with that and a bad back, which has forced him to miss almost three games. The injury has brought thoughts of retirement to the forefront. I'm starting to get concerned about, you know, the, the long-term prospects of what, what's happening to my back. And uh, if you've got an injury that uh, uh, is, you know, bothering you a little bit and, and won't tend not to go away while you're playing a game, why then you want to think about maybe, uh, <laughs> you know, whether, what you want, whether or not you want to go on. But. The 31-year-old middle linebacker says he'll shelve a definite decision on his future until the offseason. Meanwhile, Brunick hopes to play Sunday against the Giants. If so, he'll face a hot quarterback in Phil Simms. We just see it when he walks up the line of scrimmage, just the way he approaches the center, and he looks around, checks the defense, calls his audibles. Uh, he's throwing with great accuracy. He's very healthy right now. He's not intimidated. The blitz doesn't bother him. He reads his defenses. I mean, he's just a good, confident quarterback. Mike Fernandez, Channel 5 Sports. In the college football ranks, DCU departs for Houston tomorrow in preparation for Saturday's game against the Cougars. Coach Wacker talks about the defense of the opposition. He's a fine quarterback, really runs a veer well, has a great arm. He's really throwing it well this year. And uh, obviously they have those two big old 220-pound running backs. They should outlaw them that big. Uh, you know, doggone, we'd make those kids tackles here. Obviously, see Coach Wacker talking about the defense, or the offense, I should say, of the Cougars. In the high school ranks, tomorrow night, please make note of a couple of field changes in Fort Worth. The Eastern Hills Arlington Heights game will now be played at TCU's Eamon Carter Stadium at about 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Then immediately following that ball game at about 8, Trimble Tech will match up against Dunbar. In the NBA, the Mavericks off tonight. They'll be in Philly tomorrow, home against Phoenix on Saturday. Other action in the NBA tonight. Casey leading the Rockets by two late in the fourth. Suns over Portland by two, that at the half. Nuggets by six over Chicago, late second quarter. Three other games just underway. New York and the L.A. Clippers, San Antonio Golden State, and the L.A. Lakers up in Seattle. Detroit over Atlanta tonight by a score of 118 to 114. Only final to pass on thus far. In the National Hockey League, Boston beat Quebec. Canadians in overtime outlasted the New York Islanders. Jets beat the Flyers, and Calgary outskated Detroit by a score of 9 to 5. But the big news, as we said, in auto racing, that Alice Grand Prix, 1985 has been canceled. It returns to Fair Park in 1986. But a couple of Can-Am races next right. year. Coming up next year. Okay, Scott, thanks a lot. Okay. In just a moment, Harold Taft has the lowdown on this cold front that blew in from the north. What it means is that bundling up for any outdoor activity is the only way to go. Harold's forecast is next. This is the Peugeot wagon. A station wagon that is bigger than the best-selling imported or American wagons. So big, in fact, that Motor Trend called it cavernous. The Peugeot 505S, perhaps the most comfortable wagon in the world today. Thanks, Jeff. You know, I wanted a new car that would really turn heads as well as turn corners. Gibraltar. Pays off. We plunged right into our new lifestyle. If you want to add a pool to your lifestyle, <laughs> Gibraltar pays off. <laughs> when we wanted to improve our kitchen, we needed to borrow more than a cup of sugar. <laughs> Gibraltar pays off. For personal loans for just about anything, Gibraltar Banking pays off. We may clash on the field, but Ed and I are really good friends, aren't we? <laughs> we like to work out in Russell warm-ups, because Russell can take anything we dish out, right? If you get dirty, no problem. It washes great. Russell's tough because they make stuff for the NFL. Uniforms and practice clothes. And they make warm-ups and sweatshirts and pants for you the same way. Ed. 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 See? Russell even looks good hanging in the closet. Russell. The experience Ed. shows. Well, you saw those kids there at the ball game all bundled up. That's what you better do in the morning when you go to work because this temperature right now holding there at 52 degrees 
it's going to drop on down somewhere in this range in the early morning, between 42, 45 degrees, somewhere right in through there. And with a wind of about 15 miles an hour, it's going to give us a wind chill of, oh, something like uh, 10 or 15 degrees. So, let's see, it's out of the north now. How strong is it blowing, huh? And well, it's still up there around 15 to 20. Now, that's just kind of chilly, so prepare for it. But it's going to be a kind of a short spell of cool weather. I think it's going to warm up, and I think we're going to see a change in this overall weather pattern. 1.11 inches of rain. It was a record rainfall today. 75 was the high. 31 is the lowest we've ever seen. 88, the warmest. And on this date in 1972, we had 78 hundredths of an inch, and that was the most rain until today. And at the airport, 1.11 to set a new record. It was set in 1984. Just kind of interesting side note, I think. Let's take a look at the Texas map right quick, but just an interesting side note. The normal rainfall for November is a little over two inches. <laughs> Most of our weather watchers today reported almost uh, half of the uh, normal November rainfall. But I think we're kind of getting out of this uh, dreary, dreary day after day rainfall pattern and going to get into some weather that uh, some of you might enjoy a little bit more. Still quite a bit of cloudiness you see in this uh, gray, light blue area and some patchy clouds out toward Lubbock. But it's clearing off to the north. Wichita Falls clear, um, Amarillo is clear. We'll put some temperatures on there. 56 degrees across the Metroplex. Those are airport temperatures. And there's 36 at Amarillo, 42 at Oklahoma City, and 46 at uh, Shepherd Air Force Base at Wichita Falls, 75 down at Brownsville, and uh, there's 74 around Lake Charles. You can see the temperatures are dropping on down uh, very well with that uh, northerly wind. Here's the national map, the analysis we made at 10 o'clock. It looks like a cold, cold air mass set in for a few days, but that's not going to be the case. This is going to move rather rapidly on toward the east. This front will give them some colder weather over on the east coast, which they haven't had much cold weather. And there's still a lot of heavy thunderstorm activity all the way on down into southeast Texas. A number of tornadoes reported into Arkansas today and some up in Missouri, too, as this moved on through. We had some wind damage here in Texas, but I don't think it was tornadic in nature. And another system coming in. But here's the key now. In the upper levels, this wind shift is going through our area. The rain is cut off, and I think we'll see the sun tomorrow, although it'll be a little cool in the morning. This wind pattern is going to become more west to east, and not as much north and south as it has been. Now, when we get that type of a pattern with a predominantly west to east flow or zonal flow, we can expect kind of a moderation in the weather, and drier weather too, and I think that's going to be the case. Put some temperatures on here. Show you how cold it is up here. 11 degrees, the high all day today there at Great Falls, Montana. 11 degrees at International Falls. 52 at the Sault Ste. Marie. It was 38 at Rapid City, 39 at Chicago. But look how warm along the East Coast. See, in the 60s, in the upper 60s, really. And, of course, down there in New Orleans, 85. In our area, it was 75. That was at noon. Then, zap, down it went when the wind shifted around into the north and this particular front came on through. Let's take a quick look at the satellite picture. Skies are clearing all back off to the north. This is colder air back up in here. And it's still, this is where the clouds are, see? It's still a little bit warmer. And this is where the heavy activity is in these darker areas where the clouds are built up and temperatures are colder on this infrared uh, portrayal. Now, in the morning, I think our temperatures will range from 40 to 45 across the Metroplex, probably 45 at the airport. Our winds will still be northeast. Our wind chill will be somewhere around 10 or 15 degrees. The rain will be down in the southeastern part of the state. And I think we'll see some sunshine before the day is over. By afternoon, it'll warm up into the upper 50s, near 60. Maybe some rain down in South Texas, and this next frontal system will move rapidly onto the north. I think that once this has moved back on through, which will get some clouds early Saturday morning, could be a little uh, light rain with it for a brief period of time, and then some sunshine, uh, I think then we're going to see uh, uh, quite a change in this overall uh, weather pattern. Well, outside right now, it's still cloudy, still looks kind of ugly. The wind is north, northeast at 20 miles an hour. The barometer, 3026, sand is rising. The temperature is 51 degrees. And the relative humidity, 75% as we compute it. And on our rain gauge, 88 one hundredths of an inch. Forecast, kind of chilly in the morning, 43 with about a 15 mile an hour wind. But with some sunshine, it should warm up to about 60. We'll call it partly cloudy as an average, but me a little more cloudiness on Saturday morning, about 50 degrees. Could be a sprinkle, but most of the day, it's going to be partly cloudy, some sunshine, and it'll get up awfully close to 70. That doesn't sound bad at all. And no. some hope for the weekend. Yes. Oh, yes. All right, Harold. Thanks. Thanks, Harold. Still to come this evening, a Metroplex couple's miracle. Our area's first in vitro pregnancy. And we'll talk with the lucky mother and father-to-be when we come back. Stay tuned. The Ross Grand Opening is here, so don't pay department store prices. Welcome to the Ross Grand Opening. Ross offers the entire family thousands of designer fashions and quality brand names at a low price today and every day. 
Every time you shop at Ross, you'll save 20 to 60% on the same clothes department store sell. So take my advice. Don't pay department store prices. Shop at Ross. The Ross Grand Opening is on now at all eight Metroplex locations. Call 800-345-ROSS. Oh, wait till the boys read this. What does Skip Bayless say about the Cowboys' front four? The flex defense is no longer a space oddity. This is armchair blasphemy, but the doomsday defense has fallen behind times, part of early America's team. Thanks for throwing in your two cents worth, Bayless. The boys and I agree. It's worth every penny of it. Skip Bayless speaks his mind, whatever the cost. That's why Dallas sports fans ask, what does the Herald say? A Dallas couple is expecting a very special baby. They have the first in vitro pregnancy in North Texas and hope to deliver our area's first test tube baby at the end of May. Darlene and Ray Barham have been trying to have a baby for eight years. Several weeks ago, they got the good news that Darlene is pregnant. Her eggs were surgically removed at the Trinity Medical Center in Carrollton and united with her husband's sperm in the laboratory. Doctors put three fertilized embryos in Mrs. Barham's uterus, and they've heard one heartbeat and seen the baby move on a sonogram. Where is she? Uh, she uh, <laughs> was turning over, the arms were moving, the legs were moving, a lot of movement, and the heart just is thriving. It was really exciting, it really was. In vitro fertilization costs about $5,000 per try, and there's only a 20% chance it will work. They say that pregnant women take on a glow, and Mrs. Barham is certainly glowing. That's mm -hmm. great news. That's it for us for now. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6. Until then, good night. Good night. This has been Channel 5 News Tonight, the best newscast in Texas.